The public now has less than an hour to pay their last respects to the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, whose remains lay in state at St. George's Cathedral in Cape Town. Let's uh, now cross to SABC News senior anchor, William Vogel, who is with the Dean, uh, Michael Weeder. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, Vuyo. I do understand that you are at this time uh, having a conversation with uh, the Dean for uh, St. George's Cathedral. Will, I'm sure, be taking us through some of what is prepared uh, as we prepare to uh, lay the, uh, the uh, Archbishop to rest uh, to, tomorrow. Indeed, uh, Flo, I am in front uh, of the cathedral where the body of uh, the arch is lying in state. And as you said, uh, the public now has less than an hour, uh, those who can make it here, uh, to still get that opportunity to see his body as it lays in, lies in state. Uh, of course, after five o'clock, uh, the arch's body will still remain where it is, where people are currently uh, viewing it. However, he will, they, he will be there alone as per his request. His request, we are told, was that uh, he should be there um, uh, the evening before uh, his funeral service alone. Um, with uh, his God, but someone who is going to take us through his wishes, uh, of which uh, lying here uh, in state overnight was part of, uh, but also take us through uh, what to expect overnight, uh, but also what to expect tomorrow, because the church uh, is going to play a leading role um, in uh, the Archbishop's uh, uh, funeral um, ceremony. Let's then welcome Dean Michael Wieder uh, of the St. St. George's Cathedral, which is where we are, Dean. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, talking to my colleague Flo um, a little earlier, I was saying that it was indeed the Archer's wish uh, that his body be put here overnight, that he should be alone with his God for the very last time uh, before the funeral takes place um, in a few hours' time. That's right, sir. It would seem that in the year of where Madiba was very frail, it did focus uh, Archbishop Emeritus' mind very strongly also on his own passing. And I remember um, one Friday morning, after the customary Friday morning Eucharist, uh, we were in the vestry after Mass, and he was talking about Madiba. And then I said, you know, what's your plans? And he elaborated on his own funeral plans. And at that time, he was of a strong opinion because of the centrality of Joba Cathedral, where he was made a deacon, priest, a dean, and the first black bishop, that, that would, a lot of the activity would happen there, and then his interment would be in the crypt of our cathedral. And then I, 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 just, I, I ventured an opinion on the matter and said, could I suggest to you where a an archbishop of our church should be buried. And I took him to a, a place where the mortal remains of Clayton, uh, Archbishop Clayton uh, is interred. And he was referred to as, by Alan Payton, as the, the apartheid archbishop because his term was from 1948 till 1957. And it was it's a harsh implementation of apartheid laws and so on. And he was of the view that he would not be wanting to be buried in an in apartheid seminary. And so it was that he is interred his ashes, which was unusual for the 1950s for someone to be cremated. And so it was that Clayton uh, uh, was. And so I showed that to the Archbishop. And then after Madiba's passing, he resurrected the conversation and said that he had spoken to Ma Leia and it is the agreement. And so the ashes will be interred, it will be, it will be acclimated, but in terms of the specificity of your question, it will be overnight, his mortal remains. Uh, this morning the cottage arrived in front of the cathedral, our, our church, lads and girls brigade came in from the west coast, all over the Cape Flats and um, greeted him with the drums and the, the trumpet uh, of, of, the, of the brigades. And so he was led in by the family 
and they had a private session, uh, the, the, the immediate and the extended family, to spend some time with their father and grandfather and family friend. And so throughout the day people have been coming and then we've interspersed that with the Angelus prayer, which is a prayer that dates back from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, where the angel Gabriel appeared unto Miriam, the young Palestinian woman who was informed by Gabriel that she would be Theotokos, the God-bearer of the divine in human history. And so throughout the tradition of the church, it has been that at 12 noon, the Angelus will be prayed, and that we did, and then at 5 p.m., we would have, and these occasions are open to the public. At 5 p.m. there would be a service, evening prayer, again the public, and the last prayer of the day is Compline. And one of our local international musicians, Darren English, has indicated he really would love to do a dedicatory solo on that occasion. And then after that 20, 25 minute sermon, a uh, service, we will then enter into the customary overnight vigil uh, that will be largely private in the sense it will be largely the family, I think the Archbishop might join, some of the clergy might join uh, throughout the night and then the service begins at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Okay. Now a lot of people of course I mean, um, uh, have been having conversations over the week as to some asking why uh, the arch isn't being buried, you know, at the stadium, for example, you know, like all heroes, especially uh, given the fact that he's been given a category one um, a funeral. It was indeed his wish that he be buried. I mean, his funeral service be held here be to once again to drive the point home that first and foremost he was a man of faith. He was fundamentally a man of faith. It is a very effective way to describe. His simple life, he embraced the, the view of Mahatma Gandhi that we must live simply so that others may simply live. And that is there represented in the insignia of a pine coffin with rope handles. And so he had, uh, when, he, when he engaged Archbishop Tabo about the eventual moment that has now happened on the 26th of December, uh, they, Archbishop Tabo devised an impilo plan and which involved three tiers of government. At that time, Patricia Delo was the mayor and uh, President Zuma was the president of our country at that time. And that was a pre-COVID period. And then last night we heard um, that we go back to lockdown level one. Uh, the New Year can be celebrated without curfew in position, but the uh, restriction on a 100 person in attendance remains intact. Because we know what happens, the, the, the grief unlocks the tremendous emotion. And so the wisdom, the prevalent wisdom, we're working with 100. Now, um, uh, lastly, um, Dean, um, this particular uh, funeral service is going to, even though it's a category one funeral, um, it's going to be different from other Category 1 funerals that South Africans have witnessed before. The church is going to take a leadership role. Very, very briefly, take us through the major highlights or characteristics uh, or that we're going to see. So as the custom is that the body will be brought in coffin to what we call the link, the entrance to the cathedral, the family would gather there, the Archbishop would say the customary prayers and myself and uh, three bishops of the church of uh, Saldana Bay, of Falls Bay and of Table Bay would read the resurrection sentences right to where we will leave the, uh, the coffin uh, in the choir stalls. And then the service will continue uh, as a requiem mass. There will be a greeting from, a pre-recorded greeting from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Uh, the, there'll be a choir located in the in the labyrinth of the cathedral, and they're singing. The logic and the choir. There we are. There we are. George and and his beloved choir will be there, and they were very special. And it's a great, I think it's a great uh, celebration that they can be in one form or the other, be able to be present. Uh, the bishop that will be preaching, uh, Michael Nuttall, he will be the sermon, and then towards the end the. President will do the eulogy, 
and the ritual of the folding of the flag will then be given to Malaya. And then we have what we call the committal, uh, where we solemnly surrender the body I mean, to God and it's our fun farewell with the body present. And then it, later on in the day, the accumation, which is a, apparently a much more eco-friendly, and as an eco-friendly uh, person, Archbishop Desmond will probably be very pleased with that. Dem, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you very much uh, for your time and the insights. And that, uh, in a nutshell, uh, flow is uh, what is going to happen uh, tomorrow. The church will be playing a leadership role. Uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, was very much a part of the, of the planning, I should say, uh, of uh, his own funeral service. Uh, so what we are going to see tomorrow, which uh, the dean has just explained, it is, will be the execution of that plan that he was part of. He wanted a simple funeral, uh, but also he wanted it affirmed that he was a man of faith. So instead of a big stadium uh, where some, a lot of South Africans would have gone to, he wanted uh, his funeral to be held here uh, in this cathedral. And with that, uh, it's back to you.